Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the European Data Portal and Support Center for Data Sharing's uh, Data Talk Sessions on the Drivers of Data Sharing. Today, we are joined by Laia Pujol to share her insights into the Anglico report she wrote on behalf of the European Data Portal. Laia, I give you the floor and thank you for your time. Thank you. So uh, my name is uh, Laia Pujol. As, as you said, I'm a research fellow at the Lisbon Council. I'm also a lecturer at uh, International University of, uh, of Catalonia and a lecturer also uh, at the Sade Business School. And uh, yeah. my, my research topic has been for, for a while digital innovation. So this is my my focus area and, and, and especially looking at different uh, innovation models that are based on opening up uh, information, data and knowledge and how companies cooperate uh, in, in these kind of ecosystems and settings. And uh, uh, for a while I've been working already on the data in particular to in, in data governance, which is the topic that I um, I'm most interested So basically how companies build uh, or cooperate in data infrastructures, how they share information, how they use this kind of analytics to provide new products and services or accelerate their R&D or innovation processes. So this is how uh, basically like the origins of, of the study that, that I'm going to share a little bit more today um, started. Yeah. Before we get into that, from data, from the broad spectrum of data governance, how did you get involved with or interested in the open data and the data sharing domain? Because they're quite specific in the whole umbrella. Yeah. So basically, I mean, uh, and uh, open data is is uh, making data accessible as a minimum restriction and basically as a lower cost. And data sharing is basically giving access to someone at a specific uh, in in a specific context. And uh, I I came interested uh, in both in the sense of this is like a continuum where you uh, restrict less or more access. I mean to your data with uh, more or less costs, basically. So uh, how to govern, basically, the access to uh, this data, whether this is openly accessible to everybody or, or whether you want uh, specific companies or organizations to access is, uh, is behind this concept of, of, uh, of data governance. So I think, uh, especially in... Um, in the in the trends that we've that we we have witnessed in the in the, in the last years, looking at more data intensive uh, phenomenon that is uh, that is affecting uh, different sectors, I became more and more interested because I see a huge uh, economic and business impacts. I mean, on companies, uh, on whether and how and with who they share their data and basically how they make sure that uh, the uses that others are, uh, are doing with their data are the ones uh, are appropriate or appropriate in the sense of what they, um, what they want or they, they, they foresee. So basically, uh, uh, I'm, my background is in management science, by the way, so uh, and, and I'm working in business school. So for me, data is a fascinating uh, phenomenon. Glad to hear. Then okay, let's start to introduce the analytical report on the drivers for data sharing. Before I start to ask um, away on my questions, would you like to give a brief introduction to the research paper? Yeah, I, I, I can do that. So um, basically what we what we did with my co-author with uh, David Osimo, so we wanted both to uh, to better understand um, adoption, uh, both in open data and data sharing. So, because there's a wealth of uh, policy measures out there, there's been quite a policy attention to both open data and data sharing, but we were wondering how, and in particular, the, the, like municipalities or public uh, agencies were doing when it comes to adopting or incentivizing um, open data and data sharing. So what we did is 
we we entered in a exploratory phase where we had different interviews and open discussion with uh, um, policymakers at the local level and uh, also in from an agency perspective and then we decided to select in the case of open data the lombardy region basically which has put a lot of um, effort uh, in open data and recently in the last years also from a financial perspective. And then we engage in a conversation with uh, the person responsible of the open data portal uh, in the region to better understand how they were achieving a higher adoption of municipalities of open data and releasing more and more data in their open data portal. So when we started these discussions, um, they gave us uh, a data set of the 1,500 municipalities that the region has. And we started um, the, through this data set better understanding uh, how municipalities were doing when it comes to open data. So in a second stage, we selected Pavia as a municipality to dive in and really understand, in the case of such municipality, why they were doing so great when it comes to open data. So why and how they were uh, generating this kind of virtuous cycle where um, very engaged uh, civil servants uh, with, uh, with the support of policy leaders were releasing more and more data and then how different services were being built on top of this data that was released. So this one, um, and then I can share more insights maybe later on, on the results. And then regarding the public agencies, the same thing. So we wanted to select um, a sector where data was uh, highly uh, valuable uh, for innovation and R&D. And we've been doing quite a lot of research in the last years on uh, farm and health. So we were wondering to understand better other sectors because there's been quite a lot already um, insight, I would say, on the data sharing in this sector. So uh, engaging again with different conversations with agencies, we found uh, uh, fascinating the, the case of oil and gas sector. I also engage in different conversations with academic researchers that uh, are working on data governance in this sector, in oil and gas. Because basically what has happened is that we've, we've witnessed a transition of very secretive sector with oil and gas uh, companies were very protective uh, towards uh, very valuable data on exploration and production activities, which are the early stages of the energy production. And we witnessed how uh, both in Netherlands and Norway, there was, there was this um, increasing movement of uh, of uh, sharing more and more data, not only with the government, but also towards third parties. But uh, why we selected Norway and Netherlands is basically that in both cases, we uh, saw uh, increasing like data sharing in this sector, yet the approaches were different. So this gave us an opportunity to understand different mechanisms uh, creative mechanisms that were put in place by both countries in order to incentivize oil and gas companies to to share their data. So I don't know, maybe it's enough and maybe through our conversation we can go through the different results. What do you think? You're mute, Eileen. Thank you for yeah. notifying me. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good start and also also to reach out to the audience um, if they also have questions regarding what Laia just shared, please either stay in the chat or also unmute yourself um, and use this space to ask Laia for more details on her research. Allow me though to kick it off. Um, you mentioned in regard to the open data in Lombardy and in Padua, how did, how exactly did the, um, did the region motivate the civil servants to be interested in doing this and how yeah, how exactly did they achieve having such a high number of open data publications? Because you discussed that there were they were enforcing a virtuous circle, that the civil servants were very motivated to do so, um, to, to search to look at and to publish the open data, and that they were achieving this in great quantities compared to other regions and other countries. Are there specific examples of why this was successful? Yeah, so so basically, I mean, uh, um, 
well, we, we, we did not do a, a systematic like comparative analysis with other countries. So we really like focus on, 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 on Italy and the region of Lombardy and, and the different municipalities to look at the different dynamics. What we learned, and this is something that can be um, inspiring or uh, uh, for, for other um, territories, basically, is that they, uh, they gave uh, financial, um, the financial support is, was very small. So, I mean, but to those municipalities, particularly to the small ones, in order to make the data available. So you need to think that uh, to upload data in, into an open data portal, there are different activities which require like data creation, uh, standardization of the data so that it can be reused, uh, the metadata, meaning putting the information of the data that you're uploading there. So there are different different works need, need, need to be uh, put in place. So basically they gave small amounts of money uh, to cover the cost, uh, take into consideration that the cost can be around 2,000 euros, so it's not much, but to cover the cost, the direct cost of those municipalities to, to, to work with, uh, uh, with this data, but not only. So the financial support was not enough. So on top of it, the region help and coordinate uh, with different um, companies and suppliers that help those municipalities to uh, upload the data and, and, and make it uh, ready in order to reuse. So basically, because there are economies of scale, they negotiate or try to orchestrate with a couple or three suppliers, and they facilitate this context to the municipalities that they could select among uh, all the suppliers that they want. But I mean, they had like a different uh, prices or, 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 or um, it was easiest basically to, uh, and then also the suppliers, I mean, gained some knowledge about how to do this work across the different municipalities. So it was kind of like a win-win situation. So there was these two components. And um, on the other side, uh, uh, what we saw in the study and through the interviews is that um, the fact that the civil servants were motivated, like had the financial resources, the technical support, and the willingness, the motivation, I mean, to do so, uh, they could already grasp uh, very quick benefits of opening up data. So they, they were mentioning different examples of how uh, their data on the territory, for instance, in Pavia, was uh, being used by uh, um, bike sharing uh, services or other type of services. So this generated like uh, like this kind of virtual cycle because then policy leaders saw the benefits of the different services that were popping up uh, just by releasing the, the data in an appropriate uh, format, uh, etc. So even if the the, the, the parties that were governing the, the municipality change, that by the way, change in every election, yet this upper um, uh, and managerial administrative, uh, very engaged civil servants that were there, I mean, it was not, uh, this was not something that the policy leaders touched basically. So they protected this. They, they, could, they could see the benefits for everybody. I mean, despite the, like the different parties, etc. So this, this became, Kind of, uh, kind of uh, neutral. I, uh, I think I, I, I answer a little bit your question, but uh, I can, I can provide more information if you want. Elin, you're, you're, you're mute. Yeah. It's hopefully not a uh, recurring problem. Uh, you definitely did answer my question, and the follow up to that is. With this um, economic incentives, with the coordination, with the business suppliers, the policy leadership, and um, the technical guidance, what, um, in light of all these things, what can other cities and countries, or what are some takeaway messages that you found in this research that other regions, cities, and countries can more concretely take away? Because this is also quite specific to the Lombardy region, and not everything that was done here is applicable to other areas. Yeah. So basically the takeaways uh, is that first, uh, making data uh, available to the public, so open, uh, has a cost. So if someone is serious about, uh, so if a region or a state or a territory is serious about uh, open data, then they need to provide 
financial support, which is not a large one, so it's very, uh, it's, it's quite small quantities, but they, they need to provide uh, financial support and uh, easy to access to these municipalities, by the way, so not a financial support, which is like very hard to get or something, so very kind of like a very easy um, access. And then they need technical guidance, which is not providing like, okay, here you have guidelines, you need to read these. So it means like putting someone there in these very small municipalities, which sometimes they don't have like the technical capabilities or the skills, I mean, to just like uh, deal with, with these data activities. So someone, it can be like a supplier, it can be an intermediary by, um, by another uh, administrative level, but someone that comes there, that goes there physically and engage with the civil servants and help making the work, basically, uh, putting uh, the data uh, out there. And then uh, from, from the case of Lombardia, I mean, it's true that they, they did some dissemination activities in order to get people engaged and reuse the data, but one key takeaway is that the thing that generate more um, the, the leverage, I mean, the more like services or different activities on top of this data is that they used data standards that are globally or widely uh, used, for instance, for uh, geospatial or for others. So um, putting a lot of attention and time, but making this data standardized then you can discover, because this is what happened in Lombardia, and then your data is being used by plenty of other services that are in OpenStreetMap or in other type of uh, platforms. So basically for, for us, this was the main uh, takeaways. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I invite also again the audience to come in, in the chat or unmute yourself if you have further questions. Otherwise, I have. I, I, uh, Stefan, yeah, I have uh, yeah, my video. Uh, so now you can see me, hopefully. Um, you, you just mentioned the data usage or monitor the data usage. Uh, was there a way how to do this, actually? How to get an idea who uses the data? Because, I mean, let's say you provide data via an API. Um, then anybody access the data and, and uses it for something. But how do you, I mean, how do you know that this somebody used this data for something? I mean, was this part of the project or of the study to, to get an idea about this data consumers, who they are and what are they doing with the data? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, as part of the study, we didn't uh, get into the details of how they track basically the, the data reuse, which is one of the uh, most challenging things. I mean, uh, both for, in the case of data sharing for the oil and gas sector, but also from the open data. So in, in this case, in, in, in the, I can share the examples of, uh, so basically in the Italy, in the Lombardy region, it's, it was the civil servants like following up and trying to monitor basically in different in in the big black platforms and but it was more in a hazardous or in a serendipity uh, so it was not something systematic that was done basically so there was not a systematic approach of tracking the reuse of data so they don't know they they don't know this they only know like anecdotal examples of how this data has been reused because they happen to uh, you know, like uh, to know because of different circumstances. In the case of the public agencies for data sharing, uh, they, uh, for instance, in both uh, Netherlands and, and Norway, the different services, they know more how this energy data is reused just because other, for instance, geothermal energy productions or, or other energy productions are reusing this data. So basically it's a very direct or very close uh, reuse in the sector, and this is something that um, that that they can that they know because they oversee the energy production in the country. But again, uh, I don't know if there's a systematic approach of how to track. This is also one thing that uh, we have had problems with other type of studies, for instance, uh, related to open source. So open source hardware, open source software, how people 
use your code, your hardware design, your data, which is openly available for other purposes. This is still maybe other technologies, blockchain or others can help us there. Let's yeah, see. I mean, ideally, the, the data provider gets at the end some credit for this data. And then he can say to his funder, OK, here, let's see, uh, this, the data was used in that, in that way. And it, um, what you actually funded was valuable. I mean, the funder is also interested in creating some <laughs> valuable product. Uh, different question, uh, the, the, the data quality, um, was this somehow looked as well that the quality of the data was somehow described? Because, I mean, that's always an issue when you provide some data, uh, how good is the data? And is it kind of described? I mean, there are maybe standards around metadata standards for describing data quality, but was this also part of the study? Yeah, so basically, I mean, uh, uh, for uh, the, the data quality, so for the oil and gas sector, um, I, I can explain more how, how to do it. So basically, in the Netherlands is uh, TNO, basically the agency which is in charge of uh, sending um, a survey every year to oil and gas companies. They provide the data every year and then they start an open dialogue, bilateral dialogue with the different companies in order to guarantee that they get right uh, both the quality, the metadata, so the information of the data, and, the, and that they also like comply with the data standards, so the data specifications and formats that, uh, that they need. So basically, this is a, a, a very intensive uh, work that TNO does, and they uh, adopt um, um, basic data st standards that are more like uh, European or globally, so, uh, but they are in charge of this. And then when it comes to uh, Norway, basically, um, the government, so the Norwegian government has, has done a joint venture with the different oil companies and then the, 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 the director, the, um, the public um, department that, that is in charge of this, they have done this joint venture in order to closely monitor the data that they generate, those companies, and then to get a very closer sense of the quality, and then uh, and, and then also they they provide guidance on how those companies again need to provide the data in terms of metadata, the standards, and, and these kind of things. So there are different engagements, so different uh, governance modalities, but in both cases they do a close monitoring. And in the case of Lombardy region, it was the the department the open data the, the person who is leading the region uh, the this open data policy who was uh, in a very top down manner i would say but saying how those municipalities need to comply in this provision of data so they are they have uh, centralized the provision of data through the open data portal so of course every municipality can open up their data uh, in, in the different ways that, that they want, but also they need to comply with the different rules, guidance and standards of the open data portal. So they, they do this um, activity. Yeah. So basically the, there was always kind of strong leadership involved. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, indeed. That, that's, that's a yeah. takeaway message for myself. Yeah. You need a strong leadership in these data yeah. sharing projects. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, thank you to Stefan for the question for the questions. I'm not on mute, which is a nice thing. Mm -hmm. um, I had another question also linking more to your date for when your selection of the Netherlands and Norway, I'm clear on why they were selected. Were there others that were almost selected in place um, of either of these countries that are also exemplary in the oil and gas or in the oil and gas sector or in data sharing regards? So basically we select both in the sense that Netherlands is one of the countries leading or uh, going more to opening up uh, data of, uh, of this oil and gas sector. And they've been doing this uh, for a while with building uh, quite strong uh, infrastructure and services and uh, through the, this kind of engagement of uh, TNO uh, orchestrating the, uh, this, this whole uh, trend. 
Uh, and Norway, uh, we found fascinating um, the model that they follow. So the discos that is this joint venture created by all companies uh, in cooperation with the government so that the government could be like another party in a, so it's not like a top down. So it's another party in this kind of like, uh, we could say like a consortium or a, or, or a group of uh, organizations and how um, they managed to provide uh, different basically rules on, on how data need, need to be shared. So for instance, um, they established, uh, and, and we thought this was uh, also like a, a, a nice takeaway, different embargo periods for the data. So they gave exclusivity rights of the companies, I mean, to exploit the data, but these embargo periods, these exclusivity rights towards a period of time, change depending on the type of data. So they establish somehow a different value to the data in the sense that if it's a raw data, uh, it has less uh, less value, but it's uh, data that has been already like treated and um, with some interpretations, then they give you like longer embargo periods because there's been a lot of investment of the company to extract also the, the value from this. So in both cases, as uh, they, they, they were very interesting in the sense that very creative and different approaches to incentivize, uh, to make compatible both these competitive needs of companies who are putting a lot of money, I mean, to, to extract this data and generate and this data, but also the social benefits and social goals and public good that is like oversee and closely monitor how your resources and your territory and it's being uh, uh, exploited. So, yeah. We also have another question that um, I'm at least getting. Can we? Can you share who the person responsible is in Lombardy for the publication of open data? The person, so I can recall now the, the name. I think the details are uh, in the report. And uh, but the name, I guess, we want to uh, to uh, to get it an an anonymized. So I think in the report there's there's the um, the how do you say the position the position of this person. But I think this person changed position. But anyway, I can if there's something that uh, if it's very important, I can check in the report and maybe follow up with the, with the person. Yeah. Okay. My last question, at least on my part, and I'm still inviting um, the audience to also jump in, is you already shared um, some takeaways for your research in the data sharing aspect. And you also shared a lot about how the Netherlands, for example, checked the quality of the data that was being shared by the, the um, actors in the oil and gas industry. Is this in parallel with how it was also done in Norway? Or was it, um, how did the quality, the data quality check there differ? And the management yeah. and governance? Yeah, so basically um, in Norway, uh, there's um, uh, Discos and then Discos, which is this joint venture, have different suppliers. So there was IBM for a while, but I don't know if uh, it's still, so they, they have these, uh, public contracts that, that, that change over time, well, where they have the technical support in order to um, all the activities related to data, basically, to make sure that uh, the data generated is captured in the, in the way that uh, it needs to be, and then that is like uh, treated and, uh, and, and then the quality, the data is, is, um, is appropriate. So basically they have these, uh, these contracts, which are contracts not for the specific companies, but as I said, with this joint venture, which makes more like a, um, a global or a cooperative way um, to generate data in the quality for all of them that, uh, that that's right. So yes, so there are different approaches in the sense here we have like external suppliers and the joint venture. In the case of Netherlands, you have TNO and they are doing this in house. Yeah. Okay. That is the, at least the final question, main pressing question on my part. I also open again the floor to others who would like to jump in. Otherwise, my 
I guess the final question is to Laya, what are next steps you see in research regarding open data and data sharing going for you and your colleagues and the other research in the field going forward? What other aspects need to be investigated and looked into to further facilitate the publication of open data? And so different regions and countries can realize its value and impact for the citizens and to facilitate data sharing between institutions, whether from business to business, government to business, business to government or government to government yeah. or any form thereafter. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much for, for, for uh, this question. So I'm currently uh, doing uh, research. This is my, my passion. So like uh, and in particular data sharing. Uh, and what I see uh, next, I've done quite a lot of research, as I said, uh, in pharma, in the genomics data and uh, mixed to health data. And there are quite a very creative uh, mechanisms that have emerged of how data is governed in a way that it, they can be shared uh, to the different stakeholders in the ecosystem. Now I have this research on oil and gas that I want to further and I see plenty of commonalities. So despite sectoral difference, there are uh, different takeaways. So my uh, goal is to combine the data from oil and gas and farm R&D and uh, potentially like joining forces with other researchers from other um, sectors uh, and other researchers that have been doing work on data governance and try to see patterns that uh, how to govern data in this continuum from more open to more restricted. So this when it when it comes to data sharing. So basically combining sectoral data and to with uh, to come up with very strong uh, insights there. And then when uh, regarding open data, uh, we wanted to um, to pursue the research to understand um, differences basically. So to run like a more large-scale comparative analysis of, uh, of trying to, uh, to emerge or try to identify different factors uh, generating this kind of virtuous cycle that we discover in Pavillon Lombardia. So basically like putting together like more um, data and, uh, and we were thinking also more again like more qualitative research like more interviews try to understand um, how um, the, the, the willingness and motivation of civil servants, financial support, technical guidance, and potentially other factors help to motivate and uh, increase uh, open data. Thank you very much um, for the closing remarks and for letting us know what to continue to expect in at least uh, you and your team's research in this area. Thank you also to the participants um, and for those who joined in. If you have any further questions regarding this, please do email us at info at European data portal .eu or info at EU data sharing .eu. This uh, recording will also be made live next Monday. So for those who you know who are interested in this topic but could not be here, we can share this with them so that they can also be informed. Thank you all and have a great afternoon. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.